here's the deal, Paul. Uh, nobody's behind that camera, so I can do this just unloaded as well, of course. But, I mean, if I'm pointing a gun right at you, okay, like North Korea is threatening Japan to nuke Tokyo, they're threatening uh, to attack Seoul, South Korea. They say they have the missiles. They're shooting them every week. They say they're going to nuke the U.S. task force. Don't they understand that the United States, Japan, everybody, Russia, quite frankly, is, is threatened to nuke China before they were doing this. Don't they understand that we have a right when they're threatening us and pointing right at us for us to pull the trigger preemptively to stop them, Paul? China has now come out and said that they will attack North Korea's nuclear facilities if it crosses a red line. So now China is basically betraying its own ally, saying that they will create a red line. Well, let me just stop you. That's because Trump told him he's ready to go to war and he's serious. Here's Reuters. They turned back. Uh, North Korea's main export is coal and slave labor to China. They turned back four ships, five ships that had coal on them going back. So it looks like China actually bought into what Trump was saying. It looks like Trump's brinkmanship is working. Let's talk about your source. That's huge, Paul. Uh, your source has been accurate. Who is this source uh, saying this, what happened, and now it's happened? Well, it's Jack Posobiec, who is coming on at 33 after. And like I said, you know, he was told 75% certainty they would strike Syria hours before when nobody expected it. It happened. Same source is telling him they're going to go into North Korea imminently. So we're going to get into it. He's got the source. So well, to I'm be clear, I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking him. He's a good guy. I know who he is. We said hours before they'd probably hit it right when the Chinese president met. I mean, he had signaled that. The, 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 uh, you're the expert on the source. This source way before said this was going to happen? No, this, this just came out today with the North Korea issue. So, you know, I'm going to get into it at 33 after. Well, let's talk about other... that because Trump says he's prepared the military to hit. Uh, China seems to be, I agree with your source, uh, I, mean, well, I didn't see that. Where did China say they're ready to hit uh, North Korea? It's uh, headline, China threatens to bomb North Korea's nuclear facilities if it crosses Beijing's bottom line. So now they've got a bottom line. They came out in their official Global Times, which is like the communist mouthpiece, it's sure. basically straight from the government, and said... I can quote it, China has a bottom line that it will protect at all costs. It goes on to say, China will employ by all means available, including the military means to strike back. It's not an issue of discussion whether China acquiesces, but the Chinese People's Liberation Army will launch attacks against DPRK nuclear facilities on its own. So they're so saying this that shows Trump North literally throwed down. That's what I was told. Trump said, look, I'm ready to go. They've got everybody in place. Well, let's just point this out. Everybody says China runs North Korea. That's not the intel I get. It sounds like North Korea is out of control. That's the way to do this. Let China strike North Korea then. Well, I mean, it's interesting, Alex. I did a poll. It's 50-50 amongst Trump supporters, Trump voters, whether they endorse an attack on North Korea. I mean, at least you could say North Korea is directly threatening the U.S. on a weekly basis, if, if not more. They're belligerent. They're aggressive. They're threatening a sixth n a nuclear test. They're lobbing ballistic missiles into the Sea of Japan on an, on an almost weekly basis now. So you could at least make the argument, I guess, constitutionally, that they represent a threat to the United States. Sure, let me be clear. Do that if I'm pointing a gun at you and I say my finger's on the trigger, I'm going to shoot you, you have a right then to shoot me because I'm threatening to do it. Kim Jong-un is ready for war as China moves 140,000 troops to this border after Donald Trump sends warships to North Korea. They're threatening North Korea is to, to nuke the carrier task force do they understand the United States has 20 to 1 superiority over China? No, exactly. But, the, of course, the threat is the escalation. As soon as uh, the U.S. attacks North Korea, they will lob missiles into South Korea. They will attack South Korea, and it could be the start of World War III. That's why people are concerned about I don't that. think it could be. I think if a shooting war starts, nukes will be used. No, I agree. And we need to have room for that debate. The most concerning thing to me, Alex, is... Uh, a lot of Trump supporters are not on InfoWars. You probably noticed this. They're completely on our side in terms of being against a military escalation in Syria, against toppling Assad, because it's proven completely disastrous every time we've done it in the past. But then if you look at the polls, for example, 86% of Republicans support the attack on Syria. 86%. Uh, roughly the same number of Democrats support it as supported an attack on Syria under Obama back in 2013. But his actual approval rating hasn't moved. It's basically stayed the same 
the general approval rating. So yeah, well, those numbers I mean, are the fake. Was the approval ratings are totally fake. But I totally agree with you. This is a crisis. Here's the deal. North Korea is threatening to attack everybody. China's been backing all this belligerence. So they're the ones starting the fight. That's why here I'm supporting the president being strong. Syria didn't start the war. Syria didn't do anything. We're backing the wrong people in Syria. That's why I'm against it. It's all moral standing, Paul. Yeah, and we're just maintaining the principle that we've had for the six-year-long Syrian civil war. The other argument they've got, I mean, I'm concerned because I'm seeing a lot of Trump supporters, you know, basically turning it into a cult of personality where they say, I will support anything if Trump says it's the right thing to do. Well, are they going to support him if he starts barbecuing babies on the White House lawn? You know, 400,000 Syrian people, both military and civilians, have died in the six-year war. Assad didn't just suddenly start killing his own people. It's a civil war. The jihadists are killing their own people. That's what it is. So what changed from March 31st when Rex Tillerson said Assad is part of the future of Syria to now we must have regime change in Syria? Something changed because it wasn't the chemical weapons attack. There have been attacks on both sides. They've killed each other. For and that's what Michael Savage years. asked last hour. I'm skipping this break so we have more time. Why, what do you think it is that changed? I think it was the demotion of Bannon from the National Security Council and the fact that Trump's being surrounded by neocons. And, you know, I've gone on record opposing that. I think it's a very concerning development. And it's concerning that a lot of Trump supporters are start not our base, not the InfoWars base, Alex. If you go on InfoWars, you read the comments. These are high information readers. But a lot of the low information Trump voters will just go along with whatever he says, not knowing that it's because he's, he's come under pressure from the people who are surrounding him. You know, back on March 11th, I said... I went through his foreign policy advisors one by one. You know, 25, 30 of them, half of them at least were CFR members back then. And it's like, well, yeah, some of them Absolutely, would be, it's the same like people. That. And what we care about yeah. is him getting policy done. If he hires goblins to investigate Mordor, that's fine. Just don't become Mordor. We don't want to yeah. catch him in bed with a goblin. But, but, but looking at this, if China is now threatening to attack North Korea... To stop them. If China just turned back North Korean coal, their main funding, it looks like Trump's brinksmanship and McMaster's brinksmanship might actually be working. Again, I'm not defending this type of brinksmanship, but it looks like it might be working. Well, I mean, you know, but we had the Korean War, which killed like 1.2 million people. That's going to be child's play compared to a nuclear escalation in that part of the world. You know, 33,000 dead troops in the Korean War. At what risk? Are they putting the Look, I agree. Like I've got children. I don't want this risk, Paul. I'm just saying, yeah. preliminarily, it looks like this brinksmanship in the Korean Peninsula is going the way of Trump. China is signaling all over the place that they're, they are now doing what the U.S. says. Well, we're going to have to wait and see. We know that basically South Koreans are panicking. Their government had to come out and quell their fears that there's going to be imminent war. You have an, an expert, we just got the article up on InfoWars a couple of hours ago, he says that there's a plan to strike the North Korean main nuclear reactor. What will that lead to environmentally? But there's a plan for that. And as I said earlier, this, this source has told Jack Possibly, heck, I'm going to get him on, that it's 50% likely that there's going to be an imminent strike on North Korea. Well, Trump's so already said that. Escalating quickly. And, and they've already got everybody ready. to. They're also going to kill Kim Jong-un. So he better be in a deep, deep bunker right now because, let me tell you, they got the space-based weapons trained on his ass. Uh, what do you think overall about the situation, Paul? I think there is more support amongst Trump voters for an attack on North Korea than there was Syria. Because even amongst... Yeah, because they're threatening people, everybody. Yeah, well, he's threatening everybody. You can make the argument from that angle. You know, they've got 200,000 people in gulags political prisoners um this this is a dictator armed with nuclear weapons nobody can deny that i think it's very different to the situation in syria but more trump supporters support an attack on north korea than they did on syria that much is clear i think on syria um this poll said 86 percent support it 51 percent of americans overall support the trump strike on syria I think that would be higher in the case of North Korea. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't, we didn't start this with North Korea. The Clintons gave them the reactors to create the weapons. Here's the deal, Paul. 
Uh, nobody's behind that camera, so I can do this just unloaded as well, of course. But, I mean, if I'm pointing a gun right at you, okay, like North Korea is threatening Japan to nuke Tokyo, they're threatening uh, to attack Seoul, South Korea. They say they have the missiles, they're shooting them every week. They say they're going to nuke the U.S. task force. Don't they understand that the United States, Japan, everybody, Russia, quite frankly, has is, is threatened to nuke China before they were doing this. Don't they understand that we have a right when they're threatening us and pointing right at us for us to pull the trigger preemptively to stop them, Paul? Well, it, it's, it's a, be a better argument for it can be made than what's happening in Syria. Let's go to Devon in Florida. Devon in Florida, you're on the air. Hey, 